as it is. I will not play first. I'll be on the draw. Okay, this is, uh, an, uh, I don't know. There's, there's no immediate action. I do have the Alter's Reap and the Active Trees in the same hand, so I'm gonna keep this one, but I'm not thrilled about the idea. And I need a, uh, a black source. Riding Mulhorn. Okay, well that makes it a little bit better. Now I'm just more concerned about drawing mana in general. But if I can get the Mulhorn out with the Quarter Shield, that'll do some work for me. He's playing blue, and we saw that he does have a couple of tricks. Okay, Necromancer is also good, but I am going to need that Swamp. So we've drawn two non-lands in a row. The reason I'm not playing the Quarter Shield, if you're wondering, is that you don't really need to play it 2-2. Two, two. Okay. You don't really need to play it till you equip it, so it's better to use it more of a surprise. There we go. There's our Swamp. Okay. I drew into it just in time. So now I can play down my Necromancer. If I can get a couple more land sources, then I'll be able to Act of Treason and then Sack. So for now, we're trading back and forth two for two. If I don't draw a land, I'm probably just going to Alter's Reap my own Necromancer. It's his fourth land, and he's got plenty of both colors. Claustrophobia. Okay. Well, this is one of those times where it's really nice to be the sack deck and play up against Claustrophobia. Because now, uh, I will have spent two cards in the Ultra Reap and the Necromancer. He will have spent one card in the uh, Claustrophobia, but I get two cards and a token off of that. So the very first thing I'm going to do is Ultra's Reap. So I get my token. I had to get two cards. So I'm even on cards, he's down a card, and I've got a token. Now if I don't draw anything here, the zombie is also expendable. I'm okay sacking a zombie and an Alter's Reap to get two more cards. I'm really fishing for is land. Okay, and I got a land. So now I've got a pair of active treasons. And next turn I'll be able to play one of these Mulhorns if I want to. I can also Alter's Reap the zombie, if I'm just really looking to get land. Uh, for now, I will not. It's an instant, so you can do it whenever you need to. Send the turn over to him and see what he's got. Uh, one of the other reasons that I am not uh, looking to Alter's Reap the zombie is if I can get one more land, I can Alter's Reap his creature after Active Trees in it. Alright, sending that through. One of the other good tricks with Alter's Reap is that you can turn something into a chump blocker. And then once it's blocked, here we go. Uh, once it's blocked, you get to sack it in response. Alright, so if I active trees and Alter's Reap now, let's see, I will be even on cards so I won't have to discard. So I think. I think that's what I'll do at this point. I do have two active treasons. Hmm. He's got counter mana up, so I think that I'll try that rather than run out the sand gear. We'll see if he counters this active treason. Okay, he does not, so probably doesn't have counter mana up. Alright, we'll get him for four. go, and then I will Alter's Reap his guy. One of the nice things about uh, this is that it gets around counter magic. The sacrificing is a cost rather than an effect. Alright, so I'm using the mana efficiently. I've got a drop for uh, the next time, and I've got two removals right off the bat. Act of Treason as well as Chandra's. Uh, this one isn't uh, purely removal yet, just because I don't have a sack outlet. Alright, he'll get Spore Mound out. And he gets the efficiency off of dropping the land after he plays it, which is the way, the right way to do it. I do now have Gnawing Zombie, so I can play that as well as I'm riding Maulhorn. And the next turn I can get the Accorder Shield out. Or I could Gnawing Zombie as well as Chandra's Outrage, which is what I'm going to do. 
I don't really want uh, him to be able to get more and more tokens. When you're in a removal deck, the tokens can be a bit of a killer for you because you don't want to be spending one-on-one -on -one removal for each token. So for now, we'll just send through with my zombie. Be happy to play uh, the gnawing zombie next as a recurring source to be able to sack, and that turns my active trees in into hard removal. Okay, there we go. Alright, his turn. So we've got plenty of beef here. I'd like to be able to get down one of these. Uh, Running Mallhorn's got one more power, uh, but the Sangir Vampire is flying. Really, another Warden? Wow. That's nice to be able to have two of those in a deck. Okay, so I've got a Duress, which isn't getting any better as time goes on. So that might be something I just want to play now. Yeah, I think that'll probably do that. And then play a Marauding Mallhorn. So for now, I'll Duress. See what I can find out. Possibly get it out of Counterspell. Nope. Uh, I knew he's got a Mancer, though. And that will probably go... Just instant or sorcery, right? Yeah, so he doesn't really have any good reason to play that. So I know that he has an island and a mancer. Let's see, I will send through with just the zombie, and then play a Marauding Mallhorn. If he wants to tra trade his bird for it, I'm fine by that. If he wants to take two, I'm also okay. If he wants to sack with the sap early, or to uh, chump with the sack playing I'm also okay. Really? Huh. Seems like the 2-2 flyer's quite a bit better, but I guess he's just concerned about his life total. He's about to get more concerned, because I'm playing the Mulhorn. And neither the sap nor the Mancer in his hand is going to do too much about it. So I'll pass the turn on over to him. Uh, because he can't really swing back at me. I'm not too concerned about the quarter shield for this upcoming turn. Okay, he gets an advocate. That's fine. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, that changed my mind about the quarter shield, though, because he can put the advocate and the sap up against the mall horn. Or, I could waste an act of treason on the advocate. Which might be what I do. Actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to play the quarter shield and have enough mana to get out another Mallhorn. So we'll cast the shield. Put it on the Mallhorn. Send it with him, and then get another one on the table. I'm going to leave this at home since it's my only sacrifice outlet. So I assume he's going to Saperling over here. No, he just lets it through. Oh, okay. That's fine by me. I will play a Malhorn. Next turn, I'll be swinging for the fences. Might act of treason something, even just to remove a blocker. And I can sack it because I've got the mall or the uh, gnawing zombie. Alright, looks like he doesn't have much to say about anything. I do have a battle driver, but I don't have that as well as another creature. Hmm. So let's see, if I remove a blocker, he can still chump block my two biggest. I hit him for three, which is pretty good. Let's see, I think I'll act of treason, something, swing through, and then gnawing zombie it. I'm not going to tip my hand on either of these because I don't want him to be prepared for it. I'll take the Advocate. Also, unless he's got some, some kind of life gain, I can also use Gnawing Zombie to, to reach him out on my next turn, even if I couldn't get guys through. Alright, attack with everybody. Including the Gnawing Zombie. They can't kill him. Even if they wanted to, it would mean that they wouldn't be blocking the Mallhorns. 
Yep, okay. So he'll scoop to that. I'll go to game three. I'm not going to change anything about my deck. I will sit around for a little bit, though. If you snap submit, they know that you didn't sideboard. And if you sit on your thumbs for a little while and just wait, and they think, what did he side in? Alright, so I let a minute tick by. That should be enough. I'll submit this deck.